Hey guys, I uh, just want to do a quick video. I uh, just saw the news where Stephen Moffat has announced that he will be stepping down as showrunner for Doctor Who at the end of Series 10. I just wanted to do a quick video to give my thoughts on this news. A lot of you that watch my videos uh, follow my posts on uh, the classic Doctor Who page on Facebook, so you and many of you see my videos on my channel. So <clears throat> I don't know that I've actually mentioned this in any of my videos on my channel, but for about the last six months, I've been saying that this was going to happen. I've been saying that Series 10 was going to be where Stephen Moffat was going to step down as showrunner. And uh, in Moffat's statement, he promises uh, a big change or a big finale or something at the end of Series 10. And I don't think anyone really has any doubts about what this big change is going to be. I mean, he's kind of been driving at this for the last four years. Uh, I would actually say he's been driving at this since he introduced River Song in Silence in the Library. He's been driving at a female doctor. And uh, I, I feel like that's probably what his big finale is going to be. He's going to be, he's going to have, uh, he's going to leave at the end of Series 10, and Peter Capaldi is going to leave at the end of Series 10 as well, and Capaldi is going to regenerate into a female doctor. Now, I do find it a bit strange that it, it seems like the, 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 what Moffat has wanted to do from day one is write a female doctor. I do find it kind of bizarre that he spends four years building up to this big change, and then right when he implements the change, he steps out. And as some of you know, I've already got a theory on why he's, why he's bowing out at that particular time. Uh, now, what I find very peculiar is his choice for a replacement. Chris Chibnall, I mean, really? Chris Chibnall? I mean, come on. I mean, he's he's wrote five episodes for Doctor Who out of ten seasons since the series was revived. And none of his episodes have been anything spectacular. You see, when, when during the Russell T. Davies era, Stephen Moffat was the obvious choice for... Davies' replacement, because everything that Moffat had contributed to the series up to that point was, hands down, the best stories we got for those respective seasons. We had The Empty Child and The Doctor Dances in Series 9. We had The Girl in the Fireplace in Series 10. We had uh, we had Blink in uh, Series 3. And then we had uh, Silence in the Library and Farce of the Dead in Series 4. So no one, no one doubted that. No one doubted that Stephen Moffat was the obvious choice for a replacement. Um... And, and that's what everyone wanted. And for for a number of years now, there's been a lot of debate on who Stephen Moffat's replacement would be once he stepped down. And almost everyone I've seen has been, they've been saying that Mark Gatiss would be his his replacement. And uh, I agreed. I, I kind of felt like that was probably going to be his replacement because out of all the writers that have contributed to Doctor Who since its revival in 2005, Mark Gatiss is the only one that has contributed more stories to the series, or at least as many as Stephen Moffat has. I mean, I don't think that Mark Gatiss's writing is as good as Stephen Moffat's was in, in the Davies era, but most of Mark Gatiss's stories during the early years of the revival were, were pretty decent. I mean, didn't he, he wrote The Unquiet Dead. I thought that was a pretty good story. And um, a, a lot of people don't like Victory of the Daleks. I thought that was decent for what it was. I mean, it's it's a better Dalek story than some of the Dalek stories we've got in more recent years. Chris Chibnall, I mean, that's that seems like such an odd choice to me. And uh, I haven't seen a lot of what Chibnall's wrote outside of Doctor Who. In fact, I'll, I'll even go as far, I haven't seen anything that he's written out outside, outside of Doctor Who. So I don't really know what kind of writer he is, and I don't really know how well he writes. But I do know that what he's written for Doctor Who is not anything to jump up and down about. He wrote 42 in series, uh, what was it, series 3, I think. And he wrote, um, he wrote The Hungry Earth and Cold Blood, which is personally my favorite story by him. It was the Silurian story in series 5. And then he wrote uh, Dinosaurs on a Spaceship and uh, The Power of Three. Uh, Dinosaurs on the Spaceship was... It was okay, I guess. I mean, it wasn't anything... It's not anything that I just, you know, I'm just jumping up down and watch again. It's not like something like Genesis of the Daleks where I just got to see it again. But, and then The Power of Three, I've only seen that episode once, and that was when it aired, and I've had no desire to see it again. I mean, that one was just flat out awful. Um, so, I, I don't understand Moffat's 
thinking on this, okay? But I do have a theory on why I think he picked Chibnall. Uh, my prediction uh, for Doctor Who uh, in the next couple of years is that uh, Moffat's going to step down at the end of Series 10, which we already know now, and I think Capaldi is going to step out at the end of Series 10, too, and I think that Moffat's big finale is going to be the Doctor regenerating into a female. And I think the reason why Moffat is, is choosing now to make that change is so he can exonerate himself from the backlash if it ends up flopping. Because this, this is an issue that's, that the fan base is kind of, they're kind of divided on. You've got one half of the fan base that don't really agree with a female Doctor, and then you've got another part of the fan base that just don't really give a shit. Now I I fall into the camp where I I'm not I'm not really on board with the female doctor. It's not that I'm sexist or anything. I just don't think it's 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 just not a change. It's practical. It's just not something I see. It's it's like making James Bond a female. I mean it's just it's not something that's it doesn't add anything to the stories and and it doesn't. I mean so it's it's like a neutral change. I mean it's just, it's something. It's a change that you're making just for the hell of it. You're not changing it to improve the series. Or um, and I get a lot of I, really, I get a lot of gas for that. Most of the time when I, I have any discussions about this, um, people will tell me that Doctor Who is a show for it's about change, and I agree. I mean, it's 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 there's no questioning that the series has changed dramatically over the last fifty something years that it's been on the air. But that doesn't mean that that doesn't mean that the changes are you, you're you're unlimited to the changes you can make. You still have to limit your changes within the context of the of the narrative of the, of the story and this is one of those changes where I mean it's it's a change that could happen yes I agree that it's it's a change that can fit within the it's, it's a it's, it's not like it's a change that's outside the confines of the context it's just not a change that's practical it's not it doesn't serve any purpose in the story so, um, it, in, in which case, it's just it's an irrelevant change. It's an unnecessary change. I mean, it's it's the equivalent of changing the TARDIS into a gumball machine, or changing the TARDIS into like uh, a porta potty or something. I mean, it's it's something that could happen. I mean, the the, the TARDIS has a a chameleon circuit and it can change its appearance, but why? I mean, what 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 is to be gained by changing the appearance of the TARDIS? And likewise, what is to be gained by changing the Doctor into a female? I'm going to be a sidetracked on that. But, so I think that Moffat is going to change the Doctor into a female at the end of Series 10, and I think that's why he's bowing out now, is so that, that's why he's making the change then, is so that when he bows out, he can exonerate himself from the backlash if it ends up flopping, and I, I believe that it will. I believe that there's just too much, I mean, even if you think, even if you're generous and you say that, or even if you're conservative, and you say that 50% of the fan base are... Uh, opposed to the change, you're w within a span of one year. You're going to lose 50% of your audience, and no television series can withstand that kind of a, a drop in ratings. I mean, you're talking about going. If the ratings are anything like what they are now, they're hovering around the seven to six million mark. You're talking about dropping to a three million mark, and that's where the series was during the McCoy era when it got axed. And uh, so I think that's what's going to happen. I think that um, I think that the, the change to a female doctor is going to be it's going to be too radical of a change, and it's it's not it's just the fan base are not going to agree with it. And I think it's going to it's going to send the series under. I think it's going to the ship's the ship's finally going to sink. It's been sinking for the last four years, in my opinion. But I think this is what's going this is going to be the nail in the coffin. Is going to be the change to a female doctor. And I think the reason why Moffat has picked Chibnall for his replacement is because Chibnall has no recognition with Doctor Who. He's he's not like Stephen Moffat was at the end of the Davies era. He's not someone who's he's not he's not a writer that immediately comes to mind when you think of great writers for the revived series of Doctor Who. So I'm not saying he's a bad writer. I'm just saying that he he's not he's not what anyone he's not anyone's first choice for showrunner for Doctor Who. And so uh, he has limited experience with the series. He doesn't have as much, nearly as much experience with it as Mark Gatiss does. So I think that the reason why Moffat has picked Chibnall, and this is just to me, it just kind of it was out of left field. It just it kind of broadsided us. It was kind of like a 
a random. It's almost like he didn't put any thought into it. He just kind of picked a writer at random, some you know obscure writer that doesn't. I mean, why didn't he pick Jamie Matheson? If he was going to pick someone that obscure, why didn't he pick Jamie Matheson? Because Jamie Matheson, he has shown himself to be a competent writer for Doctor Who. He actually introduced something that was new. He didn't just rehash old old stories. But um, like I said, I think the reason why he picked Chibnall is because uh, because of Chibnall's lack of recognition with the series. And when Series 11 rolls around and the ratings plummet because half the audience have been alienated because of the change, Moffat will have exonerated himself from any of the blame because when the show goes under, he can just point to Chibnall and say, well, I mean, you know, he's, he's not the most competent writer. So that must be why the series went down. It's, just, it's all Chibnall's fault. You know, he's just not a competent writer. He wasn't as good as I was. So that's why the series goes. That's why the series went under. So I mean, you're, you're, you're Moffat handing the show over. If he makes this change at the end of series ten, if he changes the Doctor into a female, and then he hands the show over to Chris Chibnall, you're basically handing someone a sunken ship. You're not handing someone a sinking ship. You're, you're handing someone a sunken ship. And I mean, what do you do with that? I mean, it's you've you've hand you're gonna hand him a carcass. You're gonna hand him a carcass. There's nothing Chibnall could do with it. Even if even if he was a competent writer, which I'm sure he is, I just don't know if he's a competent writer for Doctor Who. But he hasn't shown himself to be a competent writer for Doctor Who, uh, based on what I've seen in the past. So I don't know. My um, if it had been up to me, I, I think that. Um, this is the same problem with Microsoft, okay? The, the problem with the, the picking a new showrunner is they pick someone in-house. They pick a replacement showrunner who has, has, has already been in there for, you know, they've already been had their feet wet. They already know. I mean, what we need, what Doctor Who needs is a, they need a complete, a, com this, a clean slate. We just need to wipe this entire production crew. We need to get a completely new production crew in there. Someone, a, a crew that has no previous experience with the series whatsoever, you know, that has no, they, they don't have any experience with the way things were done, you know, that way we can get a completely new fresh take, a completely fresh direction on on the series, because when you get a writer in there who's written for the series in its previous incarnation, the new writer, this writer, like Shibnall in this case, they have a tendency to kind of, um, kind of lean in that same direction, you know, kind of lean in the same direction that the series was going before, and, um, I wish I wish that series 11 would be something like comparable to the quality we got during the Hinchcliffe era but I I don't think that's ever going to be the case. I don't think ever because there's just it's just there there's this whole thing where you know this this younger generation they have like this attention disorder or whatever so every story has to be this fast-paced flash of sequences you know that no one can comprehend. It doesn't matter about the story, it just matters about the visuals. So I don't know that we'll ever get any Doctor Who like that again. So I think the ship will sink before we get Doctor Who like that again. One other thing I want to touch on is the, they, they've decided to, to, put, uh, to postpone Doctor Who, the next series, until 2017. And this is something that I, find, I found very peculiar also uh, because um, I was already a little suspicious about a week ago because... Um, this uh, January is usually when they start filming for the new season, and there, there's been no. I mean, we're nearly at the end of January now, and there's there's been no reports of any filming. And uh, usually, just before the reports for the filming come out, they usually announce who the next companion is because they want to make an official announcement before the, you know, the peeping toms that get the spoiler picks release it first. But there's been no release of who the next companion is. There's been no details about any filming. And apparently they hadn't even started filming. So um, that's something I find a little peculiar too. Why, why are they postponing it to 2017? It's not going to air until spring of 2017. That must mean that they're not going to start filming probably until the fall of this year. And um, why? I mean, it's, uh, it's literally history repeating itself with like with the original series because uh, before season 23 the series went on a, like an 18 month hiatus and then it only ran for like another four or five seasons after that before it got axed I mean it didn't this this is not gonna help the ratings okay I don't know what they are trying I, I don't know something has to be going on behind the scenes okay there, the BBC 
they they either they, they they sat down and had a come to Jesus meeting with Moffat and the production crew and said, look, the ratings are fucking plummeting. Okay, you guys have got to change something because you've got to improve your writing. You got to put your heart into it or something and and give us one season with some good stories, some good shit because we're losing viewers. They're dropping like flies, or um, either that or it's just. It's just a deliberate move on the BBC's part, you know. Just they're they're, they're done with Doctor Who anyway. They just don't give a shit about it anymore. Just you know, send the send it out to pasture. So I kind of feel like the latter, and personally, I think it's just I think they just don't give a shit about it anymore. A lot of you say that uh, it's their biggest cash cow, and they would never let it get canceled, and blah 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 blah. Yeah, okay, what the fuck ever. Okay, people said that during the '80s. All right, it's only been running for ten seasons. This go around, it was ran. It ran for 26 seasons then, and it got axed. You don't think it was a cash cow for 26 seasons? I mean, come on. So if you don't think Doctor Who can get canceled, you got another thing coming. You know, the merchandise is not what keeps a show on the air. Okay, the merchandise sales alone can't keep a sort because that's that's not what sells merchandise. Is not what sells um, TV uh, airtime. That's my take on. You know this this news. Uh, I I'm the world's biggest pessimist, I guess, when it comes to Doctor Who now, and I don't think this is going to end well for Doctor Who. Uh, I've been saying for about two to three years now that Series Ten was going to be the last season, and I I'm still going to stick with that. I I mean I know there's been an announcement for Chibnall taking over for Series Eleven. But I think whether or not BBC renews Doctor Who for another season after Series 10 will depend on how well Series 10 does. Because if you look at the ratings for Series 9, they're substantially lower than what they were for Series 8. So there's been a, a, a trend of a significant decline in, in the ratings over the last two years. And if that decline continues, if that trend continues in Series 10, then... You're going to be talking about a TV series that's going to be bottoming out at like the 5 to 4 million mark. And they're, they're not going to keep it on the air. They're not going to renew it. with the If, the, if, it's, if they look at the ratings for three years and see that it's been steadily declining, it's, I mean, it's, they're going to look at it and say, fuck it, this ship's sinking. There's no, there's, it can't be saved. So they're just going to, you know, cut their losses. So I know it's not what you don't want. I know it's, it's not what you want to hear, but that's business. That's 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 television. That's the way it works. Like I said, I'm the world's biggest pessimist, and I know that's not the most positive outlook on the next three years of Doctor Who, but it's that's how I see it. And it's how I have seen it for the last two to three years. Like I've been telling you guys for I, I make predictions for Doctor Who all the time, and most of the time I'm right. So I'm making predictions now, and this is the way this is how I'm seeing it panning out. And uh, I mean because Moffat is just so damn predictable. You know, so uh, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below.